Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a new episode of my podcast, another episode in English. So <laughs> I hope it will be uh, easy to understand uh, with my accent, but uh, today I'm really, really happy to uh, be talking with the world champion and the Olympic medalist, uh, Caitlin Osman. So hi, Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with me today. It's really appreciated. Of course, and your accent's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So today um, we'll talk about your career a lot and uh, your after career also and uh, what's your project and mm -hmm. uh, everything uh, in uh, related to that. But uh, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, how are you doing, especially with the situation right now? How do you handle that? Uh, it's, it's good and bad. Uh, It's been pretty awesome, actually. I've had a lot of time to do things that I normally don't get to do, which is hang out with my dog and actually take her for a lot of walks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been good, and it's forced me to slow down my life a little bit. Um, but I do really miss shows, especially because this is a big show time of the year. Of course. Um, Normally, you would have been on Stars on Ice at this time. On Stars on Ice. I would have been heading to Japan in a day. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. now, now you get to spend some time at home and, uh, so you're, you're at your home. Uh, I'm in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're alone. You're with your family or. I'm alone. I spent the first month of quarantine with my parents in Edmonton. Um, yeah. but then I, I came back. So I'm in the city now by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, lucky we have, uh, technologies like, uh, FaceTime and zoom and uh, stuff like that to keep contact. For sure. I think I connect with more friends now than I did before. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good opportunity, the situation to, to exactly. reach out to people who maybe lost touch uh, with the sport sometime. Uh. Of course, everyone's stuck at home, so they'll actually talk to me. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to talk about uh, your career. Uh, let's go from the start. Um, I mean. Uh, I know you for a really long time. Uh, you were a long time ago in Quebec mm -hmm. training and you moved a lot when you were young. Um, you started your career, uh, well, your life in Newfoundland <laughs> I, and then you moved to Quebec and now you're in Edmonton, right? So how is it when you were younger to move a lot like that? I think because I was younger, I didn't really notice. Um, I liked skating. I wanted to do everything I could for skating. Uh, so when my coaches would tell me, okay, yeah, you're moving here, you're moving there. I'd be like, okay, sure, let's go. <laughs> so, um, and I didn't think too much of it. It was just a new adventure. Mm -hmm. It was always a new adventure. And usually my sister headed everywhere before I did. So I was like, I just want to be with my sister. <laughs> and, um, uh, finally, uh, in 2012, it was like, I think a big breakthrough for you. Your first national that you went on the podium. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, the, just a year after that, you won a Grand Prix, you won the national championship and you went to the Wells in Canada, the, the world in London. Um, it feels like everything came so fast. How did you handle that, uh, all that, those success arriving so fast? Uh, yeah, it did happen really fast. I went from being sixth and junior to third and senior. I don't know what happened. Um, I pretty much woke up one day. And decided, hey, today is the day I'm going to land a triple toe, triple toe. I've never really worked <laughs> on it before, but let's go give it a try. Um, which for me, it was really weird. Like, it took me a long time to figure out a lot of my jumps. So for me to land a triple toe, triple toe, the same day that I landed a triple flip, triple toe. And then the next day I landed at my first triple up. Like, it was just a really good week. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I went and, and, yeah, I came third in senior and then had a a year of crazy winning everything and then coming eighth at Worlds. Um, at the time, it was just awesome. Everything was new. I didn't expect anything to happen. So I just kind of rolled with it and enjoyed every moment of it. Yeah. But with how fast it came, I, I had to deal with the other half of it the year afterwards. So, <laughs> um, yeah, as fast as it came, it, it goes away just as fast. Yeah, and it, it feels... <laughs> It feels like it, it came very fast, but every competition you were dealing it so well, like even if the results keep coming and then you go to the Wells in Canada, the biggest competition, and it's 
your home and then it's your first world and it, it's like you don't even look like uh, like no fear no stress like of course there's nerves and stuff like that but you look very confident and you skate like clean performance and it's just crazy like how did how did you manage to to do that i loved competing um and to be honest i never watched worlds i never watched grand prix so when i went to them i had no idea what i was getting into um so my goal was to not come last that was always my goal going into a competition is to not come last uh so when i would win things i just laugh and being like well i didn't come last <laughs> um but funny enough going into my first worlds is when i got like my first little freak out of how fast everything was moving yeah um and i tend to forget about this but every every now and then it comes back and remind reminds me but um about a month or three weeks before worlds i hit a full panic mode i went to ravi who's well my coach yeah and i was like i don't i can't do this i'm like i'm not gonna skate good like i don't want to keep training i don't want to do this um so he started bribing me to do clean programs with gift cards of like $10 gift cards, um, okay. which for me, like $10 gift cards is the best thing ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and all I had to do was do one clean program. It didn't matter if it was short or long. I just needed to do one. And I did not do a clean program until I was at Worlds. Wow. And in my short program, I came off the ace, I skated a clean program and I looked at Ravi and I'm like, do I get my gift card now? And he's like, I set a clean program before Worlds. Oh, so you didn't get the I didn't get the card. card. <laughs> and how is it those worlds in Canada? Uh, you, worlds were supposed to be in Montreal this year, and they got cancelled. Uh, you got the chance to experience the worlds in London, Ontario. What what was the experience? It was incredible. Um, worlds in Canada, like yeah, I skated. It was skated good there. I came eighth, um, but I've had a lot of good worlds i had i've come second and first like worlds have been a good yeah. competition for me um but i still think worlds in london were my favorite um a canadian crowd is so enthusiastic um the rink was sold out and it was the only time in my life this is like my favorite memory ever um in my short program when i was in my last spin before yeah. the ending i couldn't hear my music because the audience was so loud Wow. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Of um, course. It never happened again. But in that moment, it was the coolest thing ever. And uh, it almost convinced me to hold out for Montreal Worlds because uh, I wanted to have another Canadian world. Get yeah, uh, that feeling again. Uh, to get that feeling again. And I was like, maybe it's like two years. Uh, maybe I can hold out. Now I'm really glad I didn't because I would have been holding out for nothing. <laughs> yeah. At the end, you take the good decision. <laughs> uh, apparently. Uh, so, yeah. Um, after, uh, after the season, the 2013 season, you, got, uh, you started to have some injuries. Uh, and your career, in your career, you had a lot of injuries, which happens to a lot of athletes. But especially in your case, there was some major injuries that owed you back for something like a half a season uh, or a full season um how did you how did you deal with that and how um how can i say that like at when the injuries were coming back how did you stay motivated or did you sometime lose the motivation um when i was younger it was easier to stay motivated so like uh my first major injury came at the end of um end of my 2013 year I fell on a Beelman during a show and uh, got a stress fracture in my spine <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> so that started the injury train I guess um, and it just seemed like I was always one thing right after the other but when I was younger I just I just loved skating I loved competing I loved performing and I was winning things so I'm like why do I want to hold back now so when I was injured I was like no no I'll take this as a as a benefit, I'll, I'll get in better shape. Like there's a reason that I was injured. So I was able to stay motivated for that reason. And then the next injury I had um, was when the season was already started. It was Olympic year and I tore my hamstring. Yeah. And I had to withdraw from competition. That was before Sochi, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was before Sochi. I was still new to the competitive circuit. I had never withdrawn from a competition before. Um, and I had to withdraw halfway through Skate Canada. So... 
it was hard. I was so scared. Um, but it was Olympic season and I didn't really knew, I didn't really know what that meant because I didn't watch the Olympics. Um, but everyone talked about it like it was a big deal. So I was like, yeah. Oh my God, I need to get back. Um, <laughs> so I was motivated for that. Uh, but when I broke my leg, which was my next major injury following, yeah. um, following that one, I was ready to be done. Um, I was very unmotivated. I was tired. I was stressed from dealing with so many injuries. Um, but I had a really strong team of people around me, my coaches, my family, um, my friends, and they all believed there was something left in my skating career. And without forcing me to get back on the ice, they strongly encouraged it and <laughs> I didn't want to to disappoint them yeah and that motivated me long enough for me to find what it was about skating that I wanted to continue um oh. so yeah and um at that moment that like you were dealing with the broken leg if someone told you that when you come back you win world title and olympic medal would you believe them at that moment no it's been it's been two years since i won worlds and i still don't believe it's happened so i don't think when i was sitting in a hospital with a broken leg i would have believed it oh yeah i guess <laughs> but you did it and you came back and you did all those uh crazy accomplishments so yeah. first of all congrats thank um, you <laughs> and um i want to talk because going to olympic season which was two years ago, you were a world silver medalist and uh, you, you were the first Canadian woman to do that since uh, Joanie Rochette. So uh, it was like, it was really a big deal. I mean, just to win a world medal. And did you feel there was more pressure going into Olympic year because of that last season with success? Not so much pressure, but confidence, um, which was desperately needed for me because when I broke my leg, I lost a lot of my confidence. And I, even the year before, uh, before I came second at Worlds, I was, I was struggling with my confidence, but I was able to still push through and come second at competitions. I came second a lot that year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when I came second at Worlds, it kind of, it was the first time that I believed that I was able to do more than I thought I could. So when I went into the Olympic season, I went in with a new fire under me that never existed before because I never believed that I could do anything. Um, so the pressure that I felt, I think, was transitioned into confidence for me. And every time I went, I was like, no, there's pressure because people want me to do well. Yeah. And if they believe I can do it, why can't I believe in it? Um, so that powered me through for quite a bit. So it was more like, like you knew you could do it, which was something was more a dream before now you could achieve it. Like you knew it was like possible. Um, to be honest, I never dreamed it. I didn't, I, I never believed in myself enough to even dream it. Uh, I never thought it would be possible to win a world medal. I never thought it'd be possible to go to the Olympics and win a medal. Um, my goal, like I said, my goals before were to not come last. Not come last. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, when I realized I came second one year, I was just like, why do I keep getting all these results where I am on the podium and there's people excited for me to go to competition and I'm like, why am I the only one <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't believe I can do this? Um, so yeah. But also you, you said it um, before, it was, it was like the passion of competing and skating. So I think... That's something really important to to keep in mind. It's like you you don't just focus on the results. You just focus on the fact that you love what you do and you have a blast a blast out there and you you enjoy yourself. <laughs> exactly, uh, results are so unpredictable and so is skating. Um, the ice just seems slipperier some days than others. <laughs> yeah, um, and some days you can skate fantastic. Other days you skate horribly. Um, but you can only control what you do and results depend on judges and other people's results. Yeah. And there's so many extra components that you actually can't control. So what's the point in trying to control all of that and aim for a podium 
when you could just focus on yourself, enjoy it. Um, and the results just being an extra bonus. That's a great way of seeing things. And I think that helps you to get all the success you had because that, that's keep you skating. Like, uh, it was more light and more freedom and more like you could enjoy yourself and that make the, the people watching you enjoy the, your performance more too, I think. Exactly. It took a lot of the stress away. And from experience, I've been happier with programs that let me in fifth or sixth place than I have been with programs that I was second with. Um, so it doesn't matter the placement, depending on how you actually feel after you skate. Yeah, it's more what, how, how you were in the performance and what the, are the emotion you went through through that program. Exactly. And um, at the Olympic season, uh, yeah, so Olympics, it was a, a big deal, of course. <laughs> and it was a very special Olympics because um, you compete in the team events and in the individual competition, but they were very far apart from each uh -huh. other. It was like, I think in the very beginning, the, the team event and you, the ladies were at, at the end of the games. So you had like two weeks in between them. How, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? How do you manage to keep uh, in shape, but focus and calm during those times? I was about to kill someone <laughs> for, for lack of better ways of explaining that. Um, yeah, there was 10 days between my individual event and my, uh, it, between the team event and the individual event, especially because I only did the short program in team. Yeah. Um, but we prepared for it because in 2014, I was not prepared for it. Um, I did the team event and went to train in Germany during my time off. And by the time I got back to, to Russia to be able to compete my individual event, I was tired, I was sick, I was, uh, I was not eating enough, so I had lost a lot of weight. And um, I just, I didn't have the proper nutrition to be able to make it through my programs. Um, so I learned from that experience and we prepared for it so that when I went to this Olympics, I could be, be more ready for it. So we actually did it a couple of times over the summer, uh, between my first two summer competitions, I actually went away to a different location to train for a week between the two. Um, I studied what emotion, uh, what nutrition I needed. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> uh, we had different ways of training and, um, in between the event that kept me really light on my feet, kept me energized, uh, didn't make me too tired. Uh, but I was, I was really well trained that year that I could probably do anything Ravi said and I would be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> um, so I think that's how I prepared, but mentally I was ready to kill someone. I was so tired. Um, I was talking full time with my sports psychologist, which is a big help. Yeah. Um, but I think every day I ran into someone new in our athletes lounge and, They'd be like, have you competed yet? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> and then I was just like swearing about it because I was like, how come the ladies have to wait until the very end? And we are still the only event that has a day in between the short and long. Uh, the, the other events were back to back. Uh, They were back to back. And, and my you... event wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> the only one the for only some one. reason. <laughs> But I complained about it all the way up until that day in between. And I went to practice and my practice was so bad. Um, I was falling on a backspin and I remember running into someone and I'm like, I'm so happy I didn't compete today. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's fine. Um, at the end, it was a good thing that you had that day off. <laughs> it was a good thing, but uh, yeah, and I was getting angrier as the events went on. Of course. And you see everyone competing and be done and like a bit relief that they can enjoy the, the rest of the time. Uh, yeah. what, how do you uh, manage that? Because you also like live with someone, you, uh, you're not alone in that and uh, you don't have your own room. And c could you like go see other sports? What, what, what were you doing to, to spend the day? Because there was still 10 days to, uh, yeah, not to waste, but to, you had to go through them. Yeah, so originally uh, we actually had four people to a room. So there was, my room was me, uh, Piper Gillies, Kristen Moore Towers and P uh, Gabby. Gabby Dillon. Yeah. So at least I had Gabby to like in solidarity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, we actually left. M most of us uh, left the village, went into Seoul uh, and trained 
uh, at a different location. We had our own hotel rooms uh, and they were super nice. So I was able to like relax in baths. My dad and my mom went. So we would go at dinner some nights, walk around Seoul. Um, I went to a dog food cafe. At, no, not a dog food cafe. A dog cafe <laughs> that had <laughs> coffee and dogs. So I could like get that kind of fixed because I was missing my dog. Um, and then when I got back to the village is when like things started kicking in because I was like, well, um, Piper was almost done competing. She was getting ready for her long program that day um, or a short program. I don't know when I got back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Kirsten was done. So she was just napping and yeah, because their parents always go first anyway. I so. know, it's not <laughs> fair. Um, and so, yeah, like. It, it was difficult, but I had my own room in our apartment that we had. So yeah. I was able to disappear for that a little bit. Um, I didn't watch any sports live before I competed, but we had our athletes lounge and there was always at least one person <laughs> that was on the same schedule as me. So I sat in there and watched other sports with them. Uh, that's great. And it turns out after you got uh, the great performance uh, we all saw. So uh, th that's really great. Um, after that, you went to Worlds. So you, you were probably already exhausted from the Olympics, which was a crazy event and a, like two or three weeks uh, being in South Korea. So, and then after you come back uh, at your home and then you leave after for Italy and you, how do you deal with that? Uh, it's at the end of the season. Uh, were you tired? Were you, uh, how were you going to, to the competition? Just be glad you didn't have to be around me in that month. Um, <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, it was three weeks in Korea. So I came back severely jet lagged. Um, I took, I flew back on a Monday and we celebrated. We had an Olympic celebration at my house. Uh, with a number of people coming over and then I went to go see my sports doctor because I was injured so I went to her place and she threw a party for me at her at her office um, so it seemed like everywhere I was going there was another party for like a week um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was great but it did not help with me being tired um, yeah of course <laughs> but it was fantastic because I got to eat cake um, <laughs> <laughs> but so like four days after I got back I was having to get back on the ice to train for Worlds and I was tying my skates to get on the ice and I started crying because that's how tired I was and I got on I didn't do anything but stroking for an hour and on the second session Ravi called me uh, Ravi called me over and he's like Caitlin you have to do your long program today it doesn't have to have jumps on it, jumps in it you can do singles because he knew how tired I was. So he yeah. said, you can do singles in your long program, but I need you to at least do one. And I just looked at him and started crying again. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, don't make me. <laughs> um, and I think this is the only time in my career that he didn't get mad at me for crying. <laughs> <on the laughs> ice, uh, because he looked at me and he's like, if you're half as tired as what I am, like, I can understand. So it was just like emotion overload, but I was really trained up to that point. So it was just maintaining for the next couple of weeks to be able to to keep going and I was dealing with an injury anyways so uh, my hours on the ice were cut back quite a bit um, to the point that Ravi actually sent me to Toronto to work with Jeffrey Buttle uh, about a week before I was going to Worlds where we just we choreographed a brand new program just so that my head wouldn't be focused on what I had to do. Um, just to change your mind just to change my mind. And I was heading to Stars on Ice in Japan following, uh, like I was, I was leaving from Italy to go straight to Japan. Yeah. So I was just getting ready for the show season. Like we were already moved past worlds. We're like, you know what, let's not even think about it. Let's pretend it's not happening. <laughs> um, so yeah, I pretty much cried for a month. <laughs> and finally you got there and you went on automatic pilot. I mean, if- Not really. <laughs> Uh, but how could how could you then if if it was so like you were so exhausted and how could you perform like two almost clean performance and I mean it's it's almost unreal it's crazy. <laughs> I still can't figure out how I did that. Um, we were so angry that week. 
I've talked about it with Ravi afterwards and he, he said he felt like the worst coach alive making me go because he, he knew how tired I was. Um, and then I get there and sprain my ankle on the very first practice. Like it really didn't start well. <laughs> wow. Um, my ankle is taped the whole week until the day of my long program. I was like, you know what? This tape feels weird. We're taking it off. Um, so I was just, I was not good. The Wi-Fi at the hotel was horrible. So I couldn't even do like my regular activities. Um, it was, it was hilarious. Like we went there, we were so, we just didn't care anymore. Um, my short program didn't go that well. I watched the video now and the program actually wasn't that bad, but until a year, until August, which was a year and a half after that event, I thought I fell on my axle. In the short. In my short. I got off the ice and the first thing I said to Ravi was, I can't believe I fell on my axle. And he never corrected me. <laughs> and then because I you didn't. Know, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> fall on my axle. Um, and I never clued into that until a year and a half later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just like, until my short program, everything was just like mashed into one. Like I felt like I was walking through daydream land. Um, and then the morning of my long program, I was just like, let's just get this done, please. And I blacked out for a majority of my program and went on autopilot. And when I finished that program, I was like, how did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it turns out to be like really good so that's oh, a good man. other pilot <laughs> that is the definition of what training does yeah um and working through a lot of situations and when i got off the ice the first thing i said to ravi was i did it um and there were still five other skaters so i didn't know that i won um but i was just so happy to be done the season i wasn't even talking about doing a clean program i think i just went to them and i was like i finished that program that's all i cared about it you did been, it <laughs> i could have followed on every jump and i probably would have said the same thing <laughs> <laughs> but turns out it was a, a really good program so it it's, was it's a good thing um after that you take uh you retire from uh, the competition and um you talk a little bit like uh, in interviews and stuff that it, it's a big adjustment to to stop competing and i mean i i i'm not on the ne uh, on the same level as you but i i leave that right now a little bit too because it's a transition like stop competing so um how did you live that uh, mostly like how, how much time did it take to realize that like okay like i'm done for real um, I knew when I was in my ending position at Worlds, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted, I was very emotional at that time because yeah. I was tired. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I waited about three months to even tell Ravi about it. And once I told Ravi, we're like, you know what, let's wait a year see how I feel once an entire season of competition is going uh, done and then we'll reevaluate. So we took the year um, to really just step away from the competition side. So I agreed to a thousand and a half shows. Um, so I went to shows. I, I moved away from home. Um, I changed a lot of my lifestyle and I was very comfortable with that for a while. Um, and I couldn't see myself competing again. So we made the official announcement saying that I was retiring. Um, but a big reason is that is about four months post, uh, worlds, I forgot how to do a single axle. And I think that okay. was my, my brain and my body telling me, uh, you are done. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you took the time off and it made you realize also that there's other stuff after Competi competition so there is a lot more stuff and to be honest i started skating um to be in shows i i didn't really know competitions existed but i saw an ad for disney on ice when i was like seven years old and i thought it was the coolest thing ever yeah um i actually only went to see my first disney show two years ago so i was, <laughs> I was based a lot on one ad um, <laughs> 
but my coach at the time, which was Jose, uh, yeah. Art, she told me that if I wanted to have a good spot in shows, I needed to compete and make a name for myself. Yeah. Uh, so she was right. <laughs> <laughs> and I started competing and, uh, she brought me to my first nationals when I was juvenile and I won. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, like, so when I started doing the show life, I was like, yeah, this is why I started skating and I competed for 15 years already. I had surpassed any goal that I ever set out for myself. Um, so I'm like, why can't I step away from that life and, and try the new side, try the side that I've wanted to do. And for the first bit, it was super cool, super exciting. Um, and then the transition of everything started setting in a bit more and I started struggling a lot more with not having a routine, uh, not having set schedules, traveling from one place to another without really ever unpacking. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I agreed to too much right away. <laughs> Um, so then I started not enjoying that life even, um, and then it took another year of adjustment before I, I discovered I'm like, no, shows are definitely what I want to do. And then when I finally made the decision, we're not allowed to do shows. <laughs> <laughs> and in those time, uh, that you took a step back from skating, but also f like competitive, but also from shows, um, what was going through your mind? I mean. Is it with a more like question about uh, the future, if that's what you want to do? Or is it like, did you want to go like more to college? Like, what was the question going through your mind? Um, well, one of the decide when I stepped away from the shows for a while, I took last summer off completely after a year of a lot of shows. Um, and that was my first real break away from like anything ever yeah. in my life. Um, so it, it, it meant for a lot of thinking. So I thought about, do I want to return to competitive life? Um, and then I sat down and realized, I was like, no, I don't, because I know what level of competition I want to compete at. And I know the training <laughs> that I had to commit to and the lifestyle that I would have to commit to, which I loved when I competed. Um, and I still miss a part of that, but I don't think I can actually put myself back in those shoes because that was such an important time in my life. Um, so then I thought about shows a lot more and I considered it. I was like, what happens if I don't go back and do shows? Like, what do I do? Um, so I started coaching. Um, yeah. And I started enjoying that a lot more. And then when I had to get ready for Rock the Rink, I considered it. I was like, well, I already agreed to this show. I want to do this show. But I'm like, what if this is my last show that I ever do? this last tour and a day before the show actually like opening night of the show I was talking to one of my friends and and we discussed it or like what would happen if if I stop after this and they're like well it's completely up to you um so I lived for a lot of that show thinking I was like I'm gonna try this I'm gonna think if this is the last show I ever do would I be okay with that and And because I let myself believe that, I started enjoying it a lot more. Uh, I started seeing shows differently. I started seeing it as non-competitive uh, that I could skate for the fun of it. Um, so then I, I, the question on if that was going to be my last show stopped. And I was like, I, I can't wait until the next one now. Um, you put stuff into perspective and you, it made you realize how much like you belong there. Yeah, exactly. And I just had to start seeing myself in a different way. Um, for the first year following Worlds and Olympics, people kept talking to me as if they're like, but you just came third at Olympics and you just won Worlds. Like, you're going to be amazing. Um, and they're like, we can't wait until you come back competing because no one knew that I was retiring yet. Yeah. And I think that took a lot of toll on me because I was struggling on my jumps. I was falling on single axles. Um, And I lost a lot of confidence in myself again, which is the way I felt when I, when I broke my leg and I felt like I was repeating that feeling all, all over again. Um, but in the public eye, because I was still on show every night. Yeah. So it was like, it was really hard that way. And when I finally just admit it that I was not the same skater as I was when I, when I won worlds, like I'm a show skater. Now I, I can do things that I want to be able to do. I don't need to go do a triple flip, triple toe anymore. Um, 
and embracing that style of it and yeah and you have nothing to prove to anyone anymore like exactly you just go for it enjoying and do whatever you want yeah i kept forgetting that there was no judges out there there's an audience that were excited to see me skate um and then when i could embrace that it, it made a big difference in the shows no, of course and i think that's what also that's why also you're one of the favorite that the, the crowd love to see in the shows i mean i i like to enjoy, um to watch you skates and everyone loves to watch you skate it's always like uh something a comment that's that you see everywhere like people that are it's not just about the jump it's about the everything the program the performance so and now that you can embrace that and perform that i think it's really great <laughs> yeah jumping was never my favorite thing um It was always what I struggled with the most in skating, but it ended up becoming something that I was I was known for. Um, so when I, but for me to be known as that type of jumper, I needed to train a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so when I dialed back on the training, my jumps also dialed back. So then I kind of became embarrassed about my skating because what I thought I was doing well um, was not what people were fully expecting from me, and I had to kind of shift that and be like guys that's not who i am so let's try something else here and it's it's normal also after the when you just do a, sh uh, a show season or a start on ice or a tour it's normal that you don't have the same time to train your jump you don't have the same time to train big programs with triple triple and stuff like that so and mm -hmm. jumping in a show with all the lights and stuff it's not this it's not the same deal so It's I think I actually jump better in the lights now than I do without. <laughs> For real, wow. Um, but it's true. Um, I I have no need to go try a triple flip triple toe again, even if I, but unless I want to, maybe I will try one again eventually. Um, but it wasn't just the fact that I didn't have time. I could have made time. I just didn't want to. Um, after so many years of doing it, I, I was ready to just say, no, I don't want to do it. Don't wake me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, we'll go now. It's uh, in French, we call it uh, question en rafale. So it's uh, quick questions. Um, it's uh, the first thing that come into your mind uh, to answer. So it's not a very complicated question. It's just to know a little bit more about you. <laughs> Perfect. So um, first of all, I want to ask you, um, What was the, the best meal you could have before competition? <laughs> I was going to say pizza, and then you said competition. Um, <laughs> but in, res in respect to that, I, I did eat a pizza before my long program at Olympics. So it works. It worked. <laughs> um, but no, normally I'd have like a plain chicken with pasta and lettuce, anything without flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after the competition, what... What was uh, the first thing you could eat after when you were done? Pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> I ate so much pizza and I feel like there was one competition the first year that I won world, uh, not worlds again. Um, in 2017, when I won nationals, I got off the ice and my mom had a glass of wine waiting for me. Like, oh, my mom knows me. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> um, what is the, your favorite place that uh, you traveled for competition? Japan, easily. I think that's a very uh, common opinion for skaters. Uh, the Japanese fans are just so supportive and so, like, you feel like a rock star. It's hard to compare to that. Of course. Um, I feel skating in Japan is like playing hockey in Canada. Like exactly. <laughs> um, who is or was your, your best uh, travel friend during competition or show or... Mm -hmm. Uh, Piper was often my roommate and she was pretty great. Um, but Julianne was also a great roommate and, yeah. uh, she's seen me at interesting times of the morning when my alarm doesn't go off. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your favorite jump? Uh, triple flip, triple toe. Because I didn't like jumping until I started doing triple triples. <laughs> <laughs> um, who was your idol when you were growing up? my sister um i didn't watch skating so the only person i watched and was inspired by was my sister 
And she was older than you, so she showed you the path? Uh... She was three years older than me, so she was always a better skater than me. Um, and she did dance in Paris and singles, so wow. <laughs> I was able to see all parts of it. That's great. Um, uh, during your competition, if you were competing late at night, uh, how would you spend the day? Uh, sleeping. <laughs> I would sleep and wake up, eat breakfast, um, go to the rink to practice, come back, go for a walk, sleep again, and pretty much just sleep on and off all day. That's great. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, if you would not be doing skating, what other sports uh, would you like to do? No one wants to see me do any other sport. <laughs> not good. It's not pretty. I ran cross country when I was a kid and I was okay at, at, at I won things. Um, but now I can't run one kilometer without dying. Um, I love watching diving, so I'd probably be a diver. Um, but the last time I did a front flip, I almost broke my back. Um, <laughs> and my mom tried to put me in soccer and I sat in the net and picked flowers. Uh, oh, that's great. So I'm not really sport sporty. <laughs> I'm really clumsy and not coordinated at all. I don't know how skating came to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. Um, for the last part of the, the podcast, I want to like do more um, retrospective, uh, take a step back in time. Uh, the questions uh, will go more around that. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I wanted to know, um, is there someone in your career that has like really a big impact in your career, but not someone that we know, like not your coach or your parent, like someone more in the shadow, but that without them or his or without him or her, you could not be where you are today. Um, well, there's my sister, but she's not really in the, in the shadows because I talked a lot about her. Uh, but I had two really good friends growing up, uh, Chris Moster and Anna Podilski, who are still two of my greatest friends. Um, and... Uh, I met them when I was 10 years old and pretty much my entire life revolved around uh, skating and then going to their house to hang out. Uh, so I think those two were my biggest aids. That's great. Um, do you have a funny, special, unique, uh, embarrassing anecdote, something funny that happened to you in a competition that like no one could have think of that or something, just a funny moment or... There's been so many. Um, I, I have one in mind that was kind of uh, public. It's uh, the medal ceremony at Worlds. Yep. <laughs> if you can There's explain that. Of those. <laughs> of those. Um, but yeah, the one at Worlds was definitely my most public of <laughs> my funniness. Um, but I'm very clumsy. And anyone who knows me knows that. And actually, me and Carpet have a strong history of <laughs> me uh, to the day that the first time I meet a lot of my friends, I probably will trip on carpet. Um, I was at a national development camp years ago and I tripped on carpet enough that I actually threw out my back and had to miss a number of the sessions because I had to go sit in a hot bath. Um, <laughs> so it's actually become like quite the comedic factor of me. So when I won worlds and then tripped over the carpet, I wasn't surprised <laughs> and no so like Ravi wasn't surprised Mike Slipchuk wasn't surprised none of my friends at home were surprised it was just a thing <laughs> <laughs> it was just hilarious <laughs> I was a little surprised when I I didn't I didn't see the carpet until I finished flipping and rolling and when my feet kicked up and landed on the carpet I was like <laughs> and with the flag and uh, <laughs> around you <laughs> oh man but you still got up with a smile, and uh, <laughs> that was great about the story. And How could you not laugh at that? If you get mad at it, then everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But I'm like, hey, if, if everyone's going to laugh at me, I'm going to laugh with them. So Yeah, better laugh at it than uh, cry about it. <laughs> exactly, it happens. <laughs> um, finally, um, I, I like this question. It's um, For the last question, I want to ask you, um, if you could tell something to yourself uh, five years ago, like uh, advice or uh, just a thought, something that you can tell yourself in uh, 2015, uh, what would it be? Um, 
to enjoy every moment and to remember every memory because um, each moment will have an, uh, have a have an impact on your life, whether it's positive or negative, it's going to lead to something great. Um, and I wish I knew that at 15 because, uh, well, in 2015, because I was going through a dark time with my leg break and I wish someone would have told me that everything would have been okay. And I, I would have won world. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, telling myself that I could believe in myself and not wait that long. That's great. And on the opposite, if you can tell something to yourself uh, five, five years in the future, five, five years from now, what uh, would you tell uh, to yourself? Um, wow, I've never been asked that before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, I, if I could talk to my five years from now self. Um, I would tell her to remember the good moments because it's, it's really easy to forget them and think about the negatives. So I hope in five years I've learned to think about the positive moments and remember the good times. Ah, that's great. Well, I think you're very inspiring and I, <laughs> not just for me, but for everyone who's followed your career. And uh, one, um, one thing for sure is you always been very honest and very authentic and that's what I think make people like you and wanted to root for you in competition and now in shows well they just enjoy your skating so I just wish uh, that we can go back to skating and uh, so you can do more shows and then we can uh, all uh, do what we love and uh, well thank you for talking with me for for that time <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> and uh, see you soon uh, on the ice uh, one day when we can go back <laughs> fingers crossed Thank you.